Hello and welcome to Nerd Rabbit's Ask Me Anything webinar on Control Tower. My name is Anel Barnett, the CEO of Nerd Rabbit, and we're so glad that you could join us today. As a quick introduction to Nerd Rabbit, we're the world's first AI-powered, unbiased hiring platform that matches cloud professionals with cloud opportunities. Through this AI-powered matching platform, we help cloud professionals, or as we call them, nerds, get instantly matched with hourly gigs, long-term projects, and full-time opportunities. We also help companies looking for cloud talent match with pre-vetted and certified cloud professionals available for immediate hire. We call these companies nerd herders. We are giving away three amazing prizes today to three people who attend the entire webinar. We will randomly draw these prizes and we'll get in touch with the winners early next week. And now to introduce our speakers today, Dan McAloon is Principal Solutions Architect at Triumph Technology Solutions. Dan specializes in identifying modernization opportunities and tracking success criteria for disparate groups throughout large scale engagements. Gordon is a Solutions Architect at Triumph Technology Solutions. He enjoys working with clients to formulate cloud-based solutions to achieve their business goals while ensuring their platform is secure, cost-efficient, and reliable. And finally, Michael Whaley, or as we call him Whaley, is Vice President of NerdRabbit and has over 15 years of talent acquisition experience focusing on high-tech skill sets in the cloud industry. Before we get started, here are a few words about the flow of the event. Today's session is an open forum conversation. If you'd like to ask Dan, Gordon, or Whaley a question, you may su submit your question by clicking the Q&A button in the Zoom menu bar. We will answer as many questions as possible during the live presentation today, but if we don't get to yours, we'll answer it offline after the session. And now I'll turn it over to Dan, who is going to give a quick overview on AWS Control Tower, and then Whaley will begin with moderating today's conversation. Dan? Thank you, Anel. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Dan McAloon, a Principal Solutions Architect here at Triumph. Uh, I wanted to briefly get everybody on the same page. For a long time, the, the term landing zone was a generic industry term for the, the target of an Amazon migration. Amazon briefly attempted to trademark the term landing zone, which didn't go over well. And that was because they were attempting to make a tool that built their version of a correctly built cloud environment. That tool is now called Control Tower, which is the topic of the AMA today. Control Tower is a cloud native environment builder or an account vending machine that conforms to Amazon's pillars of operational excellence. And this, the six pillars of Amazon's well-architected framework are operational excellence, security, reliability, performance efficiency, cost optimization, and as of last week, sustainability. Those six pillars of the well-architected framework are represented in some part in the things that Control Tower does. Control Tower builds by default a hub and spoke model and the graphic that you're looking at is the hub of that hub and spoke model with four main areas of operation that I'll briefly describe here. The top box that you're looking at is your master or root account, your master biller. It includes your own version of the AWS service catalog which can be used to further subdivide what your company accesses and how it interacts with the grander AWS service catalog. The top box is also where all your single sign on and, and root level security is uh, stored. The bottom left box shared services is for things like GitHub and, and shared file servers and, and network interconnects. Bottom middle, the log archive account is made for single pane of glass access into locking and monitoring operations. Uh, so that you can have one area and source of truth for all of your logs and, and monitoring that is specific to your environment as a whole, not to each individual deployment uh, along the spokes. Finally, that security account centralizes all things like IAM roles and cross account communications and VPC tunnels and things like that. So that with these four accounts together, you have a fully featured account factory that can churn out an arbitrary number of the underlying infrastructure that your business needs to allow for things like single tenant clients, blue green releases, 
test environments and then experimental things like that without violating your existing DevOps policies. Uh, so I'll turn it over to Whaley to head the much more technical Q&A. Thank you, Dan. That was pretty good. I think you answered all of our uh, pre-submitted questions. So uh, oh, thank you, everybody. Good night. No, um, <laughs> Gordon Clark is with us. Gordon, uh, it's great to see you again. Gordon and I got to hang out at reInvent last week, which is an awesome event. A little bit lower attendance than previous years, but at least we got to have it this year. So it was a lot of fun. Um, actually got to play top golf with Gordon, which was great. Um, I mean, the expectations were high. He comes from the country that actually invented the game. Unfortunately, his swing left a lot to be desired, but we'll save that for a separate webinar, Gordon. But uh, it was great. And the, uh, the expo was very impressive. And what I noticed the first thing when you walk into the expo, first single booth on the left was about AWS Control Tower. And the line was pretty much out the expo. So a lot of interest in it sort of um reinforced what we were trying to do on this webinar right after reInvent so um as with all things AWS it's best practice to jump in and give it a try on this webinar and I'll start off with some uh, some good uh, beginner level questions for you Gordon um so for registering an AWS account in Control Tower a lot of people would like to know what is that general initial process on how we can register an AWS account in Control Tower yeah, so um, hi everyone. Uh, I'll, I'll forgive the jabs about my golf. I, th I think um, you're just a bit sensitive because I think I broke one of the screens at the very back with one of my shots. So um, I think you had to pay for that. So I think that's where that comes from. Um, no, seriously though, um, yeah, the, the, uh, as you say, Control Tower was a, a big focus of reInvent this year. And I, I had the, the luxury of attending uh, one talk uh, specifically around the customizations of control towers. So uh, I see there's a couple of questions about that already. So, uh, but to answer uh, the question about uh, importing a, a, an existing account, um, it's really quite straightforward. Um, you can import uh, one account or you can import an entire OU, um, which is, uh, for anyone that doesn't know, is an organizational unit that groups a logical grouping of accounts. So normally you would have a logical grouping for a uh, prod or test or UAT or something. Um, and you can basically uh, import that entire OU or the account, uh, you know, you've got a choice. Um, and basically it's all done through the organizational, uh, AWS organizations page. And you can go in. You can go in through the the control tower UI, and you can just register. It's, it's a simple click to register. Uh, the process takes uh, for for an OU or an account takes around ten minutes, and the reason being it's got to roll out a number of um, governance uh, resources out to the child OU uh, and accounts, uh, and for each additional account within that OU it would take uh, about two minutes. So, uh, so it's, it's, it's pretty straightforward. You, you, you effectively click a button and go and grab a coffee is the short answer. Gotcha, great. And is there a maximum number of accounts that you can manage through Control Tower? Um, theoretically, uh, not really, but there's, <laughs> uh, there, there's a, there is a hard limit on uh, the number of accounts um, in an OU that can be registered, which is uh, anything greater than 300 per OU is a problem. So of course, you have, if you have two OUs with 290 each, that's not a problem. Um, and obviously that's the caveat to that is your, your own organizational uh, limits, which uh, again, these can be managed through Control Tower as well. Um, but you can, uh, it's all set on the number of limits. And these are soft limits that you've got. The, the hard limit is the uh, nothing greater than 300 accounts in an OU uh, can be imported, so. Okay. And across all those uh, accounts, so our cross account changes um, made through Control Tower, are they displayed in each account too? Uh, yes, you've got that central portal, if you like. But you can obviously see, you, you know, these are standalone, not standalone, but they're, they're accounts in their own right that you can view 
and uh, look at accordingly. Um, and uh, all the what what I've done in the past is when when I've deployed uh, resources into uh, via control tower, um, sometimes certain uh, users logging into that account may not. Uh, be have the required access uh, or they may not have uh, the need to see the resources deployed by control tower i'm thinking for example compliance uh, config rules for example some uh, you know devops people they've no need to see it they, they don't need to to look at it so what you can do is you can lock that down again through control tower you can roll out roles and um i am resources that, that ring fence those resources and don't allow those people to see it. But out of the box, you can see the resources that are uh, that are being deployed into the account. Okay, now that's good. That's good for talking about initial uh, account setup and creation. And another way that maybe to automatically deploy multiple accounts, people have asked is we can use cloud formation to deploy those accounts using control tower. Is that uh, possible? Yeah, so um, the you can use the CLI, you can use uh, Boto three. Uh, what what um, Control Tower does is uh, it wraps CloudFormation anyway uh, via Service Catalog. Uh, service Catalog for anyone that doesn't know is again a, a, a mechanism of uh, I take a boilerplate uh, control um, boilerplate CloudFormation template, I import it into ser uh, Service Catalog. And I say that is now a product uh, and I can farm that product out. And so uh, that's the mechanism you can use. And of course, that mechanism can be controlled using almost any mechanism you use currently in uh, AWS, like the CLI, like uh, Boto3, uh, you know, the SDKs. Um, and and there's, there's example code out there to do that. So it's quite straightforward. Excellent. Um, so uh, going into sort of compliance and um, regulatory requirements. So uh, there's a question that, that I've, I've seen is what regulatory requirements could we more easily meet with control tower versus before? Yeah, so a, a good example of that is um, you've got different types of, of guardrails. Um, so you've got the preventative side, um, which are uh, on the compliance side. So you've got uh, where you, you prevent policy infringements. That could be something as simple as uh, we don't want any resources created in um, the EU, for example. We want all our resources created in US uh, or US East 1 or US uh, East 2, what, whatever it is. Um, and what happens is these can be rolled out um you know to all accounts or subset of accounts uh, using a cloud any cloud formation template or using scps and so you can roll that out you've also got the other side of the guardrails which are detective controls uh, and these detect and alert uh, depending on any violations any breaches uh, and again you can then take actions after that remediate actions or alerts, um, SNS uh, topics, which send out emails, SNS, whichever it is, SMS, sorry. Um, and these use config rules. And uh, as part of the config rules, you can use, there, there's um, there's templates out there that, that have, that are CIS compliant, for example, uh, HIPAA compliance. Um, and there's a lot of crossover between these. So, um, it actually, you can you can mix and match these um, these config rules and roll them out to again single accounts or to multiple accounts at at, at the same time. And again, it's a, it's these aren't just. Um, of course, you could. I, I've had the. I was going to say the pleasure, but I've I've had to actually roll my own control tower in the past three four years ago. The, the, it wasn't as good a tool as it is now. Uh, and I was part of a team that built and rolled out our own version of this. And our, we, we all thought our version was great. This is fantastic. However, when you click, uh, when, you, when you send out those config rules, for example, for CIS compliance, you have to keep on top of that and make sure it runs repeatedly. 
whereas Control Tower does that for you. Uh, so it's kind of fire and forget in that way. Although speaking of ro rolling your own Control Tower, note that Control Tower is not available in every single Amazon region. Specifically, GovCloud does not support it. So if you're doing work with the US federal government, especially FedRAMP related work, all of this is unfortunately moved until that product makes it to the GovCloud security zone. Can you expand on that maybe uh, a little bit on why that is? Amazon releases almost all of their services in US East one first and then rolls them out to other regions uh, as they reach maturity. Things like workspaces and control tower are still relatively new within the Amazon ecosystem. So they're being rolled out from that Virginia area and then outward around the world. GovCloud in particular is not only one of the last regions that accepts new features, but because of its nature of extra added security, many of the features that make it to GovCloud are locked down in ways that the public cloud features are not. So you'll, if we do ever see a version of Control Tower that is compatible with GovCloud, it will likely be not quite as cool because the, the bits on the ends where you can attach custom scripts are going to be more tightly locked down. It won't be able to import images from other accounts and, and various things like that. Okay, correct for that explanation. I learned something, awesome. Um, <laughs> Gordon, you talked a little bit, you started talking about uh, a certain type of guard, guardrail and you gave a really good example. Um, another question is if you can get into maybe other, well, I think we, we covered it, but are there any other types of guardrails and maybe any other examples that you can share on how it's used within Control Tower? Okay, I'm you, Gordon. I, was, I wasn't doing a very good job of miming there, was I? Um, you, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, you can roll out uh, almost anything that can be uh, put in a cloud formation template, you can, you, can, um, you can roll out with Control Tower. And, and what you can do is you can uh, wrap things up um, you know, to, to enforce your data security. For example, you can roll something out that would make sure that all your S3 buckets and EBS volumes are encrypted. And you, of course, you get that knowledge that it's, it applies to the accounts you want it to apply to, you know, so you get that, that uh, fluffy feeling, if you like. Um, and also you, you're, uh, you can, you know, let's not forget that the amount of companies who've uh, inadvertently exposed data on their S3 buckets, uh, reputationally and financially, that can be, it can be quite a, a serious thing. Uh, luckily, uh, in latter years, AWS have locked that down to make it, uh, you know, by default, it's, it's private. Uh, but of course, there are still cases where somebody has a fat finger and uh, makes uh, an S3 bucket private with some, some private data in it, uh, public with some private data in it. And of course, with Control Tower, you can not, you can enforce that and remediate as well, uh, or use AWS Config to remediate that automatically. So it's, uh, you've got that kind of guardrail that you can roll out. Um, and things like IAM security as well, you can roll out uh, where, um, I'll give you an example, uh, where I've worked in the past, we allowed uh, developers to create their own IAM roles, uh, and as part of that, we rolled out uh, a, 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 with Control Tower, we rolled out um, a specific requirement that the, when they did that, they had to have, these IAM roles had to have a permission boundary in them. And what that meant was, even if the, the developer had created an ad administrator level uh, role, IAM role, the underlying uh, permission was only the maximum that would be allowed by the permission boundary, um, which sounds a bit wordy, but essentially it means that you keep everyone in their playground, uh, keep everyone in their sandbox, so they don't go to regions or to services that you uh, don't allow them to. Uh, but, uh, and this is the key point, you give them the power to do their job effectively. It's not just uh, an arbitrary line, someone saying, computer says no, it's actually allowing someone to do their job at the same time. So uh, I like to think of these guardrails as they're not, you know, um, they're, they're not a disabler, if you like, they're, they're actually an enabling tool to give, to grant the users the permission to do what they need and to give the company 
uh, the, the governance over that to ensure that they're doing it safely and securely. That's it. Yeah, I, I like that. And uh, it, it doesn't muddy the waters. It keeps them focused on what they can do to be able to create their job or keep, keep doing their job. Um, wanted to kind of pivot a little bit more, get some good questions regarding security roles. So um, one question is, can we define certain security roles like security groups or network ACLs to be used in any new account control tower creates? Yeah, so um, you can, the short answer to that is is you can, and if it if it's can be defined in cloud formation, you certainly can. Is so if you define your uh, rules in cloud formation, uh, and uh, you define these things uh, in the template, it can be rolled out effectively as a product. So you can you can certainly do that. Um, of course, uh, just to, this might be touching on other questions, but you can. Um, use Terraform as well. It's possible to use Terraform. Um, and so for anyone out there who uses Terraform, we at, at Triumph, we're a, we're a CloudFormation or Terraform or CDK shop. We are, um, uh, would you call it polyglots, I suppose, uh, in that regard. So we, we, we have no, there might be individuals with preferences, but as an organization, we are, we are adept at them all. So, um, but certainly, uh, you can use uh, these things to roll out ACLs, security groups, and so on. Excellent. Nice little plug, too. Um, <laughs> uh, moving on to the next question. So can we create infrastructure with account templates like VPCS, EC2 instances, RDS, et cetera? Um, yeah, so you can actually... Um, uh, it's not a word, but templatize these accounts uh, specifically using uh, there's the there's a, a relatively new feature um, called customizations for AWS Control Tower. So what what um, that does is you you effectively define in in YAML really what your what your account is going to look like, um, and from that you then uh, and when I say YAML, it's not a it's not a cloud formation template. YAML it's it, it's just uh, if easily readable. It's a descriptor to show what what each account looks like, uh, and from that you can then uh, extend it and uh, make each account uh, appropriate to its needs. A, a good example is uh, so you would have a security account, you would have a log archive account, you would have uh, your workload accounts, for example. So normally the needs for your workload accounts are different than your uh, let's call them system accounts, you know, your security, your log archive, your shared services, things like that. Um, and the good thing about these customizations is you can then, you can tweak each account accordingly. Um, and for example, your, your security account is only ever going to be accessed by security professionals. Your log archive account is only going to be accessed by tools or people with the appropriate access to look at the logs. Uh, for audit purposes, usually. Uh, your workload accounts are only going to be accessed by, um, hopefully, by developers uh, or, or operators who have access to those individual workloads. And again, it, it, it just gives you that extra benefit of um, segregation out of the box. Uh, and what Control Tower does is give you that automation that wraps it all, makes it easier um, to consume, really. That's great and that you actually start rolling into like our next question, which would be some of the top use cases for control tower customizations. Um, is there anything that you could expand on that? Because you, you, you dove and gave in some good examples, but anything you'd like to expand to answer that question? Sorry, what was the question again about? Wanting to get some uh, additional sort of top use cases for control tower customizations. Yeah, so um, essentially uh, the, main, the main ones are, um, governance so for example you're uh, you would want to uh, i work for a medical company let's say i want this account here specifically deals with the the, uh, the resources that need to be covered by hipaa compliance so i would roll that roll out specific guardrails specific rules that need to cover that so when my auditors come in i can show them the evidence 
and and they're happy. And similarly, you can do the same thing with SOC 1, SOC 2, PCI compliance. You know, uh, for example, it's good practice to have the, the things process. You might have the, the traffic coming in to one account uh, for your, your um, you know, your admin of users, for example. Your other traffic coming in might be where you process your credit card payments and never the twain shall meet. And mm -hmm. then the, these customizations allow you to keep that separation, but also you get the benefit of automation. So the, the, that you know that these are applied to each account and you get, uh, you get those benefits. Um, and again, the, I've worked in places, I've worked in banks back in the day when such automations weren't available. And it was, it was I mean, it was, you were able to do it, but not with this ease and not with this power, uh, if I'm honest. Gordon, I have an actual question for you that I don't know. Can you limit the service catalog on child accounts with Control Tower? Could I deploy like an experimental dev account where I'm still controlling what the devs have access to? And that can be a Control Tower template. It is a dev playground environment. Yeah, yeah, you could. Um, when you say you limit, you, you limit, the use of that account to service catalog only? Is that what you mean? To specific slices of the service catalog. So I'm happy to let my devs play around in EC2s, but they're not allowed to make SageMaker pipelines. That's not their job. Yeah, so you could do it a couple of ways. The way, a, a really good way to do it is namespacing. So you can effectively roll out something into that account that explicitly denies on service catalog you, on a specific name or a specific tag. And, you know, uh, it's a really effective way of doing it. Uh, I've done that very thing for uh, the use of parameter store and the use of uh, other things that you can namespace. Even EC2 instances, uh, you can effectively namespace them or, or use tags and you can um, say, I've, I've got a, a, an allow on tag foo uh, and you've got an allow on tag bar. Uh, I've got a, a deny on bar and you've got a deny on foo. Uh, I can't see your stuff, you can't see my stuff, but we're in the same account it, and it, it, it would work well that way. Uh, it does take a little bit of forethought perhaps, uh, but you can definitely do it. Right. Question here, this is uh, outside my pay grade. Um, I've understood probably about 75% of what you've said so far. So good job simplifying it for the layman's. I appreciate it, Gordon. But um, does AWS Control Tower have an API so we can use or a Python SDK like a Boto3 submodule? Um, yeah, so it, it, you can use uh, Boto3 um, or, or the SDKs. It, essentially, you would call the service catalog API. And that's how it's done. Uh, and uh, again, the, the CLI examples uh, I've used are really straightforward. Uh, the Boto3 examples out there appear to be really straightforward as well. I've not used them in anger myself, but um, they are they are they are uh, pretty good. And essentially, uh, it, it mirrors exactly what you're doing in the in the UI. Uh, the good the good thing about it is you can, as you mentioned, you can pipeline these um, things. And, I also put and, a link, uh, sorry, Gordon, in the question and answer, if you go to answered questions, I put a link to the account factory example script from Amazon's development team. Yeah, yeah, I have to say that the account factory part is is really good. It's um, having having had to roll my own, the, the account factory is is pretty good. And um, all I'll say is when we, we rolled our own, it took it did take a lot of effort. And uh, for anyone that's used step functions, um, we were right in the weeds of uh, step function DSL language. So it was quite uh, it was quite good. But um, that that's a good point actually. The um, the the customizations uh, part of control tower uh, uses step functions as well to orchestrate um, uh, around all the accounts, uh, and it does it quite well. Again, I've got uh, we've, we've got a link, or uh, we've got a, a 
um, a diagram that we can send out that shows the architecture of it. Um, it, it it's not that complex. It's just uh, it's event driven and it plugs into the control tower APIs themselves. So it's quite it's quite good. Excellent. All right, I'm gonna move on to some more questions, but we are uh, we have it open. Everybody who's on with us right now, uh, submit some more questions for us. We're gonna have probably about 10 more minutes to be able to pick Gordon's brain and the rest of the team over at Triumph. So please get those in. Um, decommissioning accounts. So can you talk about decommissioning accounts uh, with accounts created with Account Factory through Control Tower? Are there any limitations? Yeah, so um, I would say that that, is the part of control tower that's maybe um, not the most fluid, uh, but I think that goes for AWS accounts in general, right? The the, the decommissioning of an AWS account uh, is is inherently a kind of manual process, um, and uh, of course it's you know it doesn't take long having done it myself, uh, having had to do it for 10 accounts at once <laughs> is, um, you know, it takes a few minutes per account. So it can be done. It's not a hugely onerous task, but uh, by virtue of what Control Tower does, it farms out all these resources to your account. So what you have to do is you have to, um, you, you decommission the resources that it, the Control Tower sends out first so you delete the SCPs, for example, you would delete the stack sets and stacks. Um, so again, for anyone that doesn't know what stack sets are, they're a, a cloud formation um, a construct where you, you have a single cloud formation stack and you can say, yeah, I want that stack to exist multiple places. And that's what that's the underlying technology that the uh, control tower uses uh, for a lot of the resources. And so what you would do is uh, delete the SCPs, delete your stack sets and stacks. Uh, and again, this could be scripted by the way. Um, and you delete S3 buckets, of course, uh, checking with your uh, boss first, of course. And uh, then you would just clean up the account, account factory uh, from the from the control tower GUI and make sure the roles and policies have gone. And then, and only then, would you then uh, go and uh, remove the account itself from the organization. And uh, again, that's a process that takes, you know, if you know what you're doing, it's four or five minutes. Uh, but then once it's gone, it's gone. Um, and the, the account stays in a kind of, you know, state for a week. And then after that, it, you'll, it'll still appear on your organization, but it can be used. And then it's, it just dies a natural death. Now, I did see uh, once um, when we worked with AWS um, ProServe, there was a, a delete account button on the organization page. And we tried it and used it, but we felt it didn't, it, it sometimes would leave the account in a kind of limbo state. And so for the sake of three, four, five minutes, whatever it was, we, we, it's better to do that. You know, the actions where you, you orphan the account and delete it. And that, that's the best way. Um, so, um, it, but if anyone's got an AWS uh, rep, feel free to feedback that they want that button product, uh, productized. And then that would save us all a few minutes, I'm sure. I think there, there's some there's some people from the product team on the call, Gordon. So hopefully they heard you. Sal <laughs> <laughs> relay. Uh, nice. Well, before getting into maybe some stuff uh, reinvent focus, uh, here's a question that actually it could be it could be a bookend question. Dan went to it a little bit, and it's uh, simply describing the differences between an AWS landing zone and an AWS control tower. I'll, I'll start because I'm familiar a little bit. You know, landing zone is a little bit more complex, obviously, to set up. Normally, you're engaging pro server consulting service for that, but it does offer a, a lot of flexibility. Um, control tower is a bit simpler for uh, setting up than a landing zone. I've heard people say that even the layman can set it up within an hour or something like that. But I'll let you expand on the main differences that, that you see. And uh, for use cases right now, for setting up new accounts within AWS, my understanding about 99% of those are done in Control Tower, but would love to get 
your input on it. Um, and I think there was you, multiple questions that I threw your way. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no problem. <laughs> uh, so the yeah, the landing zone, I see landing zone as the it was the kind of first iteration of um AWS's automated account creation uh you know uh thing if you like um and whereas again in my opinion AWS control tower is much more feature rich um much more of a um overall solu holistic solution if you like meets meets way more needs um don't be wrong uh, Landing zone was good. It was okay, um, you know. It, and a lot of people, uh, we we where I worked previously, we did uh, we tried it out, uh, and this is many years ago, um, and it, yeah, it was it was decent. Um, whereas the the control tower, I think, is much more uh, usable, and and not only that, it's it's got a double benefit of being uh, easy to easy to start with, you know. So straight away, if you just follow the defaults, you will end up with multiple accounts um, in, a, in a structured way that are governed effectively. You've got a security account, logger account straight out the box. You've got uh, a sandbox uh, OU to put your workload accounts in out of the box. Um, and it really works well. Um, and uh, it's, it's worth noting, by the way, just to add, uh, we talked about uh, limitations. Uh, one limit limitation is that you have to have an email address tied to each account. Um, there are ways around that. The way I, the way I've done it, where um, there was a central admin inbox for an email, and what you can do is you can have admin plus uh, sandbox, admin plus security, admin plus log, and then that gets around the need for. 50 separate email addresses, but also uh, allows you to centralize the, the, that if you need it. Uh, that's one limitation. Uh, but again, it's, it's an easy limitation to, to, to work around. Um, but uh, yeah, it, to answer your question, I think Control Tower is a, a way more mature solution. Um, and uh, again, it, even for people that aren't that adept at using AWS and Anger, it's a great starting point. Uh, and, and what's good is it does give you that logical separation between accounts, which uh, again, means that you don't then need to get in the weeds of, I've got, uh, I've got, you know, resources here that are production and I've got development resources and developers in here. How do I protect my production resources from my developers when they're separate by accounts? That happens automatically. You don't even have to think about it, um, and that's that's uh, that's to me that's the most compelling thing. Yeah, I agree. Separating from production to the development to test um, makes it very much easier. So the session that you went to at reInvent uh, was was it focused on Control Tower? You and I weren't able to connect after, or was it? Yeah, it was. Um, it was. It was all about the. Um, control tower customizations. So okay. uh, they went through the, the customizations part um, and they, they talked about uh, the benefit, you know, the things that we've talked about on the call. Um, and, and what was great is that some of the questions, you know, that have been asked this evening or it's evening for me, um, some of the questions asked have, have you know, where came up uh, multiple times at the talk, so uh, people were going up to the to the presenters at the end and asking those same questions. So again, for, for anyone looking to adopt uh, Control Tower, the good thing is that there's there's a lot of uh, customers wanting to use it. So with that comes the benefit of the product team support uh, behind it. You know, the more customers using it, the the more uh, the more development it'll get and the, the, the longer it'll uh, run. And uh, so it can, it can only improve. Uh, and the fact that it's a good product and it improves, uh, it's improving as well is, is again, compelling. But the, yeah, we, it, it, there was a, 
the probably the most interesting part for me was that I originally thought that control tower was a purely cloud formation, uh, you know, thing. Uh, and in actual fact, they 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 really were keen on. Um, and I think this is based on customer feedback, which AWS thrives on. Uh, a lot of customers had requested Terraform support. And again, at Triumph, we definitely see a lot of our users, a lot of our clients wanting to use Terraform. Um, and so the fact that it can support Terraform um, extending control tower with Terraform as well is is really good. It's it's um, I mean, you know, the fact that you're writing these account provisioning things in YAML or HCL, which is, you know, what HashiCorp uses, uh, what Terraform uses, you know, it, it doesn't really matter. But but you know, obviously everyone has their preferences. But I think that's good that it shows that it's um, it's here for the long term and it's it's going to improve. I think it's I think it's a good good bit of tech. I hope it's here for the long term because I'm sending this uh, video to AWS. We're going to get you as a guest speaker at next year's reInvent. So you're oh, building up your portfolio and your resume right now, my friend. And mainly I'm doing that because I want to rematch at Top Golf next year. How about that? Cool. That'll be good. I, I'll need to get, I need to get a tie to wear under my hoodie. Yes. <laughs> of course. <laughs> at that's least it's a, a standard partner wear. Yeah. yeah. You, guys, yeah. you guys are lucky that I couldn't make the Top Golf because I would have put you all to shame. <laughs> I had a ringer there as well. So I had somebody in my back pocket just in case I couldn't take Gordon. Luckily, that wasn't the case. Yeah, Vic is the master of top shelf, the top shelf <laughs> trick shots, like hitting it off the pin and then back into the row above us and things like that. They're very good. That'll be our next happy hour at reInvent. It'll be top golf trick shots with Victor Raymond. <laughs> I love it. Well, um, Gordon, I appreciate the time. We've sort of reached the end of our Ask Me anything uh part of this webinar so um you know i enjoyed it uh learned a lot myself i'm sure a lot of the participants learned as well uh, i do want to turn it on over to victor right now definitely talk a lot about triumph technology solutions and uh, what they're bringing to the cloud space and and helping companies transform so victor you're up my friend perfect so sorry i didn't have a slide i didn't know i was making this uh this webinar today. I'm Victor Raymond. I'm the Chief Executive Officer of Triumph Tech. And some of my, my of you guys might ask is, who's Triumph Tech and how are you guys qualified to talk about AWS Control Tower? Um, so at reInvent, we were actually built on Control Tower launch partners. And we were actually launch partners with the built on Control Tower Terraform uh, release also. Um, we are one of the top uh, AWS partners in the partner org in the startup segment and the AWS SMB segment, so small to medium sized businesses. Uh, the reason why we partnered with NerdRabbit today on this webinar is we wanted to um, give our expertise to what they're doing. We, we think their product is great. And we have uh, an activation day that's coming up. And people might say, what is an activation day? An activation day where this was just theory about Control Tower, where we will help you guys activate Control Tower on AWS. Uh, I put a link in the chat. I think um, we also have a one pager that we'll throw in there. Feel free to sign up. We'll get you details about when it is, whether it's one-on-one -on -one or a group session, and we'll help you activate Control Tower on AWS. Um, I'm not going to go through all of our, what AWS calls superpowers, but we specialize in migrations, DevOps, container serverless, application modernization, and data and analytics. Uh, so Control Tower from a services standpoint is the foundation that we implement in most of our customers' AWS environments. So we'd love to see you guys at the activation day. Feel free to reach out with any questions that you guys have through our contact us page, or we hope to see you guys at the activation deck. All right, thanks, Victor. And so a few final words about NerdRabbit and why you should sign up for free. We help companies and consultancies supplement their existing teams with skills and talent to execute projects internally or to round out their consulting teams. 
For cloud professionals, we help you monetize your side hustle with endless opportunities, minimize your efforts in finding work and get paid for engagements within 48 hours. And for employers, we offer minimal resume review with top talent on demand, reduced time to hire, and the ability to pay through Nerdly or the AWS Marketplace. If you'd like to connect with Dan, Gordon, or Whaley, here is their contact information, and Taylor will actually uh, paste their emails into the chat as well so that you can copy and paste that versus having to type it out. This concludes our presentation today. Thanks so much for attending, and we look forward to hosting you during our next Ask Me Anything webinar. Thanks, Bye. guys. Have a great day. Bye, everyone. Thanks, everyone.